to observe the five precepts first. Please uh, recite three times Namotas Bhagavato Arato Samma Samudas. Buddham Saranan Gachami Dhamman Saranan Gachami Sangham Saranan Gachami Tityampi Buddham Saranan Gachami Dutiyam pi dhammam saranam gachami Dutiyam pi sangham saranam gachami Tatiyam pi buddham saranam gachami Tatiyam pi dhammam saranam gachami Tatiyam pi sangham saranam gachami Panati pata viramani sikha padan samadhyami Adinna dana veramani sikha padan samadhyami Kami sumicha chara veramani sikha padan samadhyami Sura Murtsavada Viramani Sikha Padan Samadhyami Sura Mereya Majja Pamadakhana Viramani Sikha Padan Samadhyami Tisaranin sadhim pancha silan sadhukam surakhitam katwa apamadin sampadit namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhas Namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhas Sabbeva nikhe santi bhuta loke samusayam Yatha eta diso satta loke apati pugalo Tatha gato balapato Sambuddho Parinibhutu Brothers and sisters in the Dhamma, I just recited the verse that was uttered by Sahampati Bhakma at the final passing away of the Buddha. Literal means is all living beings die. Even the most perfect and incomparable Buddha passed away. This is recorded as Diganikaya Mahaparinirvana Sutra. Today, this Dhamma talk is brought to you by the Buddhist Gem Fellowship at Damansara. We are very much thankful to their adorable faithfulness to the Buddhist community. 
we are here at deer park in varanasi 2564 years ago in four days buddha passed away in the city of kusinara now here we are today talking to you given this dhamma talk from the deer park in varanasi of course it is lockdown period therefore we cannot walk to the deer park but at the jambudip temple near the mulagandikutti vihara we are delivering this dhamma talk and it is deer park where the buddha delivered his first dhamma sermon dhamma chakka pavattana sutta it is very commonly known varanasya in pali varanasyam isi patane migadaye dear pa varanasi o varanasya ba wa similar in pali to sanskrit languages so buddha important and the first sermon was delivered at this place the mula gandha kuti vihar so varanasi is very important because there are so many first things happened in this city first the buddha having attained the buddhahood walk from bodhgaya to varanasi to deliver his first dhamma talk dhamma chakka pavattana sutta and there buddha declared four noble truths eight four part so dhamma chakka pavattana sutta to which the permanent and eternal truth was declared to the world by the buddha 2564 years ago in varanasi and that is the place where the first enlightened monk was produced in the sense that the venerable kondanya or ascetic kondanya attained the sota patti this is very important ascetic kondanya was not a buddhist so in the buddhist dispensation the first one to attain the enlightenment or what to call sota patti first of the four enlightenment stages was a kondanya an ascetic but he was not a buddhist but remember he had all the qualities noble qualities virtues more than what a buddhist required because he has developed the spiritual aspect of the life and even the extra powers psychic powers they have developed and they were advanced five disciples when buddha came to varanasi to deliver his sermon so kondanya ascetic kondanya at the end of the dhamma chakka sutta he attained the first step of the four stages of the enlightenment sota patti so the first enlightened disciple was the product of varanasi and at the same time immediately after that the first ordination took at this place that is yasa kula putra 
who was first ordained buddhist monk in varanasi so the birth of sangha community of sangha happened at this place varanasi in isipatana and yasakula putras parents having seen their son became buddhist monk they took the refuge in the buddha dhamma sangha so the first disciples or the upasakas a buddhist were produced in this varanasi city jasakula putra who became a monk and immediately after that their parents took the refuge in the buddha dhamma sangha so buddhan saranam gato hoti dhamman saranam gato hoti sangham saranam gato hoti itta vata ko mahanam upasako hoti buddha explained how one can become a buddhist one who take the refuge in the buddha in the dhamma in the sangha he becomes a buddhist the same way yas venerable yas parents became buddhist they took refuge in the buddha dhamma sangha so they became the first family to become the upasakas lay upasakas in the dispensation of buddha and then in this place buddha observed first was Buddha observed his first was here, and at that time there was a Brahmin lady, Nandaniya. She built Nandia, Nandia by the name. She built Kuti, a hut for Buddha to live in. so that became the first shrine hall of the buddha sasana so first sangha then first couples of buddhist and then first enlightened monk then the lady first built the shrine hall for the buddha so shrine first shrine hall in the buddha sasana was here at this varanasi built therefore it is very important for us to know these historic things that have taken place in this varanasi city and not only that after that buddha he first dispatched 60 disciples for different directions to spread the buddha's teaching that took to place in this varanasi charata bikhave charikam bahujana hitaya sukhaya attaya lokanu kampaya for the good of many for the happiness of many for the welfare of many for the joy of both human beings and devas please go forward and take my message across thereby buddha dispatch sent off 60 of his disciples advising them let not two of you go on one same direction advise those don't go take one direction you must go alone take the message of the buddha across so it started in varanasi So it is very important for us to know these historic events. But this interpretation, when Buddha said, "One must go alone," 
by oneself. But there are certain books, some Western scholars have translated it as go not singly, but in pairs. This is a wrong translation of the original Pali text. Buddha never said to go in pairs. He said always, let not two of you go one and the same way. So, so this, this happened in Varanasi. So today this Dhamma talk is brought to you from this place by the Buddhist Gem Fellowship. It is good also to know some aspects of the Buddha's life. Buddha's life is so many events, full of so many events. And even if I learn during our whole life, we will still have a lot to learn. So it's the life of the Buddha. Very interesting. I asked everyone to read at least few pages of his life story. So interesting. Buddha, the greatest human being or who became a Buddha and he is today venerated, respected, worshipped across the world, not necessarily in this world, but in the divine world too, for his greatness. When the Buddhas, before his birth, there was a great prophet in Israel, Saya. Some of you have heard it, learns at the end of the seventh, uh, beginning of the seventh century. He had this to say that was before Buddha. He said, For us, there will be a great master, wonderful counselor will be born soon, a mighty God, everlasting father will be born unto us. An eternal father, a Santi Raja, a king of peace, will be born to us. A Devati Deva, Adipati. All these titles have been given to Buddha. It was noted well by H.G. Wells. And H.G. Uh, Wells, in his famous book, A Short History of the World, he said that Buddha was the greatest person born ever. And therefore, this greatness that we should know why he is great, how he became great, what the services has done, and we should know what his mission. So therefore, when this Greatest prophet Isaya mentioned about the wonderful counselor. All these titles have been given to Buddha. Wonderful counselor, Acharya Puggala. Buddha is called always Acharya Puggala. Then the mighty God, the everlasting father. Then we call very often when you pay respect to the Buddha, you remember Satta Deva Manusana. That's another title of the Buddha. Then Santi Raja, King of Peace, Santi Raja. This is known by that also. Then Adipati, Devati Deva, head of the gods and human beings. All these titles have been given to Buddha. So, Buddha's arrival, coming, was revealed by another prophet, Prophet Isaya in Israel. And it has happened immediately after Isaiah's gone. Now, Buddha's mission is very clear. He was born to this world to free beings from suffering and to teach them a path that helps them to put an end to both birth and death.
if one wants to do so. In Chulla Satchaka Sutta, in Majjima Nikaya, he has clearly said that Buddha so Bhagava Bodhaya Dhamman Dese Ti, Danto so Bhagava Damataya Dhamman Dese Ti, Tinno so Bhagava Taranaya Dhamman Dese Ti. Like this, he has said, the Buddha was born to help others. Buddha so Bhagava Bodhaya Dhamman Dese Ti, having attained enlightenment. But the preachers for others to attain the enlightenment. The Buddha, having emphasized on the need of practice of the Dhamma, there are three things in the world that shines. What is first? The sun. If it is cloudy, then we won't be able to see the sun. But when it is cleared from sun, clouds, the sun shines bright. That is the first. Second, the moon. If there is cloud, if it is cloudy, if there are full of clouds, then we won't be able to see the moon. But if the moon is free from clouds, Clear, on clear sky, the sun, like sun, the moon shines. So, sun and the moon, they shine beautifully, nicely, brightly when they are open, free from clouds. The third thing was Buddha's teaching, Buddha Dhamma. Tathagata pavedito dhamma vinayo bhikkave vivato virochati no patichan. In Anguttara Nikaya, Buddha said, My teaching, the teaching of the dhamma, when it is exposed, it shines more. No patichan, no. When it is concealed, it won't shine. So Buddha's teaching is just like open sun and open moon. They shine brightly when they are free from clear of clouds. In the same way, when the Buddha's teaching is exposed, it shines more. Now it is good to understand what is Dhamma. Now, Venerable Ananda, the chief attendant of Buddha, who has been throughout the life of Buddha, always following his and keeping in memory all what he preached. And one day, when Buddha informed him about the coming of his Parinirvana, Venerable Ananda was crying because he was not yet attained to any stages. He was because he had the opportunity, but he purposely postponed it, put off, put it off because he wanted to attain the Buddha. And when Buddha said, Ananda, I have told you, I have reminded you in advance that all living beings will die one day. So what is the purpose of crying? So it is, he emphasized, why dhamma sankara pama dena sampadete, everything impermanent going to vanish, disappear. Practice the Dhamma diligently. So what is Dhamma is also very important. Not to have a, a hole full of books in Almira or Tripitaka. But what is in the books, if we, we don't put it into practice, then that Dhamma is no use. What is Dhamma is what we practice. Dhamma is not necessary what is written in the books. Then our, then our knowledge, knowledge, knowledge somebody knowledge, can say, I went through the whole scripture, I know by heart this sutra, 
but it is not too important. It's good, of course, but again, what is important is what you know to put it into practice. So, Dhamma is something, a day-to-day -day life, we need to practice in day-to-day -day life, every moment. When we talk to others, if we use good words, if we look at others in a friendly way, if we smile, if we wear a smile always on our face, we are peace givers. When we talk nicely, we are spreading the word of metta, compassion, kindness, and thereby we are inspiring others to be kind, compassionate. So it is a good thing that you are even without knowing, you are spreading the Dhamma. You are giving the Dhamma. Sabba dhanam dhamma dhanam jinati. When you talk nicely, you practice Dhamma. And thereby you are spreading the Dhamma. Because you motivate others. This will say, how nice this person. He talk nicely. Then they will question, then why I can't? If they follow, then you have preached them a good dhamma. So it is very important to understand these things. These are the dhammas in day-to-day -day life we can practice. At home, if the wife is talking nice to the husband, if the husband is talking nice to the wife, if the children talk to the parents nicely, if the parents talk to the children nicely, what a beautiful atmosphere, what a beautiful environment. That beautiful place becomes a nice place to live in. Everybody at home, they will be healthy, nicely, happily. Thereby you are inviting devas and you are motivating others. Even neighbors will talk, look at the people others. In our neighbors, they are nice, peaceful. Now here you are preaching the Dhamma. You are giving the Dhamma. You are teaching others, you are motivating others without your knowledge. You are spreading the Dhamma. This is the Dhamma we have to apply to our day-to-day -day life. We, we must know that Dhamma is not in the Almara, in the books. It is not somewhere. It is inside me, with us, with each of us. So at the home, creating a good ambience or good atmosphere, an environment, a place, nice place to live in, is in the hands of those who live at home. Even for fun, don't raise your voice. Even for fun, don't use utter ugly words. Simply try to control. Then your words, your emotions, then you are spreading the Dhamma. You are making lots of merits because you are giving Dhamma Dana, not necessarily motivating. You are making others to understand. You are making others to follow you. That is the Dhamma. That is the propagation of the Dhamma. Remember how you react to the situation, how we respond to the situation. When people talk nicely, when people behave nicely, then of course you will be a peaceful person, a happy person, and you are a happy giver, happiness giver, you are peace giver, you are peace generated. I remember one time, somebody, Venerable Anand, in fact, phoned Buddha and told Buddha, Oh, Venerable Bhotama Buddha, people around this area shouting us, people around this area insulting us. So what we should, what we should, we should do what? We should change this place, when Gautama Buddha. We cannot stay at this place. It is time for us to 
live from this place therefore buddha let us move to another place so buddha said that ananda if we move from this place to another place then ananda what if the people at that place if they shout if they insult then what we do we should go to somewhere else okay ananda if you go to that place what if it happens there then buddha said ananda we must move to another place is not the solution ananda it is that we should settle the matter here a peacefully nicely the solution is not running away from the problems to face the situation intelligently and face the situation bravely and address the situation accordingly change in not the place but such things for that we need a beautiful words a good speech nice conduct and at the same time another story by somebody by the name atula what he said he also complained buddha buddha the people in this village they insult us it is good for us to go somewhere else what we should the buddha said porana metang atula netang ajja tana miya nindanti tunni hasina nindanti mitabannam bahubani nam pi nindanti natti loke anindito atula this is not a something new those who are silent they are blamed those who speak bit they are blamed those who speak much they are blamed there is nobody on the planet who is not to be blamed so ananda it is good to understand that here and now we have to solve all these problems intelligently beautifully peacefully for that the dhamma is there apply the dhamma what is dhamma again pure watch me bahasiya yache vacha subhasita if you want to talk talk something nice happily freely and that will bring the peace joy happiness so dhamma is to be applied kullu pamanvo bikkave dhamman desi sami nitharnataya no ganataya i preach you dhamma not to carry just like a raft that you used to cross the river you don't carry the raft on your shoulder after crossing the river you leave the raft at the river but the same way whatever you practice you practice the dhamma it is not simply to memorize and keep in memory apply that dhamma when you speak nicely those people they will be calm quiet and you will be motivating them they will learn and they will apply this teaching to them and look at how buddha is insisting on us to apply the dhamma dhammo bhave rakati dhammachari when we apply the dhamma that dhamma will protect us so again what is dhamma our beautiful nice peaceful conduct 
observe certain precepts, principles, live with certain principles that we call sila. So that is we call dhamma. When we abide by dhamma, that dhamma itself will protect us. But unfortunately, who has spoiled the environment around us? Now we see the today we talk about Corona virus and it is spread all over the world. And why it has happened? Because we have a spoiled the environment. We have spoiled the environment. Now you see last few weeks, all over the world, people are under lockdown or under movement control. Therefore, the environment, the pollution has dropped half to, to about 40 to 45 percent. So it is important to know who has spoiled the environment. It is nobody else. It is us human beings. We have been cruel to the nature. We have been very true to the nature. We have been harmful to others. We have been very rude to others. Therefore, it is good that we understand how these things can be spoiled, how this thing can be avoided. Now you see, over 200,000 cows were slaughtered every day in the U.S. Some baby cows were born on the very same day. They were slaughtered for selling for extra higher price. The tender meat of freshly born baby calf and mother cows are crying in pain. Not one, but hundreds and thousands of them. They are pain emitting to the universe, environment, a cry of pain. Now we see last few days or couple of weeks, tigers, leopards, lions, they are roaming the street of capitals of different countries, especially in Africa. They have said, if they were to speak, they will say that you have chased us away from and you have equipped out our inherited place. You have taken in our inherited birthrights. Now it is our time. Go away. But we have put behind the cages and we are rearing the animals for our own consumption. And we have generated the bad ill will and those pain of cry creating anger emitted to the universe. And this has changed the normal functioning of the universe. Thereby the universe is returning or reacting in forms of tsunami, in form of typhoon, flood, earthquakes, virus. Today what has happened is a virus is something that we are responsible for that. And we can easily, if we try to change the atmosphere, then we can change this kind of epidemic. And for that, we need to be more aware of this. We need to be more concerned about the well-being of others. If we hurt the feeling of others, then it is coming back to us. 
Recently, one scientist took a slaughter to a farm where there were about hundreds of cows roaming here and there. The group of scientists let this butcher walk into the ground. All these cows were running away. They were afraid of him and they ran away. Then this scientist, they took him to another corner and let him go into the park. Then these cows were running away in fear, fast they are running. They tried again, then again the same thing happened. The cows, even the animals could feel the butcher's feeling, angry feeling, wicked compartment. Then they want to try again, they just let one of them who were very nice person, foreign person, they let him to go. Let him go, walk towards the cows. Cows were not moving, they were just standing there. Then again, they sent another one who was also, they were not moving. But in between, they again let that man, these cows running away. There's a fool fear. Because, because this man does not feel that. A friend of mine took me in Chicago. He was uh, selling uh, meat sellers. One day I had the opportunity to talk to him. I told him, he told me I get my cows and goats slaughtered. They had a long discussion with him. I tried to persuade him, but I had to do it very intelligently because he has a lot of reasons to defend him. But then again, I told him, would you like to take me to the place where you, the, you get slaughtered? He told me, if you don't mind, I can take you tomorrow. I said, okay. He came and took me early in the morning and big farm, a big inside a building. And I hear the sounds of the gun, dum, 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 one after one. And he opened the door and he took me inside. The shorter knew that the man who come in there, but he used to look at who is this funny man. But he continued to do it, just aiming gun and just firing one after one. A line of hopes are coming. Oh my God. I couldn't control my emotions. I said, oh! The man immediately pointed the gun at me. I was shocked. And my friend immediately took me out. And I asked my friend, why? He asked, what happened to you? I said, you know, I couldn't control my emotions. How on earth this man can do a line like push up coming? He simply just killing one after one after one. But he used it. He doesn't feel that. He supports at least a couple of thousand every day. And this is the time. With wicked mind, he's doing that. He's generating lots of commas that will come after him. And even we can't think of his sorrow. Maybe he will have to face millions and millions of lifetime. He will have to face the situation. Believe me, this is how the people get used to it. I try to convince later my friend that you should not get your things shorter. You go to supermarket and buy. I'm happy to say that after long work, <coughs> I could convince him that he could buy from a supermarket somewhere. His needs, but not he never wanted to get it shorter by. 
the feeling, this kind of feeling. Hundreds and thousands of cows, animals are slaughtered and they cry in pain and emit to the air a grief, pain, anger that rotates in the universe and it comes in pain. In America, always there is a fun, there is typhoon, there is a flake. In one part of America is always, I'm not particularly talking about America, it happens in many parts of the world. But the communication, you see how you communicate, your thoughts communicate with the universe and it, it changes. So when we are angry, when we are cut, rude, we are emitting lots of bad ideas to the environment and collection of that of many people will generate bad returns. Today we are facing this step. It is, it cannot be avoided until and unless we decide to change our course of action, our direction, our practices. Only then we will be able to change this. And <clears throat> why we are saying this? When you talk nice things, it communicates with the universe, with the others. You become a good person and in return you become a good person too. That can even give life to the dead one. Love. Now you see, we talk about mother's love, parental love, children. And uh, recently, something happened in Hong Kong. A lady, a young lady, at the delivery of this maiden child, he went into coma. Doctors have put her on a life supporter. Next day, they said that she is no more, she is dead. They put her into a cooler room until the date is fixed for a funeral. Here, the baby is living nicely. But here, one day, after a couple of days, baby started crying. See, the child was crying and crying and crying. Nobody could stop. The nurses who took care of her, they passed from hand to hand. And but still they couldn't control that the kid was crying and crying and crying. Refuse food, refuse drink, the tiny baby. The one nurse, she was so tired. She was a little bit upset. She said, oh my God, what can I do for this baby? She's crying. She took the baby to the cooler room with the cap on the baby. And this two or three day old kid, this nurse took the baby and opened the clothes and let the baby see the face of the dead mother. All of a sudden, this baby stopped crying. And then this nurse placed the baby's face on the face of the mother. The two-year-old, two, two, two day old kid, tightly grabbed the mother's cheeks and placed, and now tightly placing the face, started crying, crying, crying. 
in a no second, in a few seconds, the dead body here, the dead woman was opening eyes. Mother's love, the warmth could enliven the dead. It is still a miracle. We cannot blame the doctors decided that she was dead. Something has happened. But here, the warmth of the mother, communication between mother and the child revived the life of the mother. This is what Buddha in Karani is Sutta that all of you know, all of you chant. Mata Yatha Niyam Puttang Aisha Ek Puttamanu Rakhe Just like a mother who protects her nurses, who takes care of her one and only child with love, affection. We cannot compare the great warmth that the mother is having towards the one and only child. Only one can be a mother to feel that. I cannot feel the warmth of my mother because I will never be in this life. Feel because I will never be able to be a mother. Those of us, as with men, 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 men must think that we will never be able to feel feeling warmth of the mother until we become mothers. It doesn't mean that that Buddha underestimate the warmth, love, affection of the father. They have equal love and affection, but mother's love is different. Mother's love is special. So when we spread loving kindness to others, think of yourself and compare yourself to the others which is the best. First, when we think of ourselves, when we become kind, when we become compassionate, these are the noble qualities that we need to develop. When we develop these qualities, we become special people. We will feel the power of the Dhamma. We feel the joy of the Dhamma. We feel the presence of Dhamma. You look at left, you feel the environment. You feel the outsiders, the reaction of outsiders, the response of outsiders. The give a smile, the smile is responding, coming back to you. Even the atmosphere is blessing you. Corona will not come to you. You, you, you. Meditate. Wish everyone good luck, happiness, joy, these things. Then we will change the world. Don't try to change the world. Change yourself. I went to change myself before I change the others. If I don't change myself, my effort will be useless. Therefore, it is good to practice at home. You love towards your wife, love towards your husband, love towards your children. Children in return pay their due respect, adore their parents, venerate their parents, appreciate their commitment, appreciate their love. Then you will be blessed. The house is the divine place, heaven. Hell and heaven is or can be created by us. It is up to us. The coronavirus cannot be wiped out, chased away. If we develop hate, anger, jealous, 
रिवेंज एंड इट विल गो ऑन हां एवरी डे फ्री मिनट्स ऑफ द डे मॉर्निंग और इवनिंग स्पेशली दिस डे यू विश योरसेल्फ हैप्पीनेस जॉय गुड happiness joy to you continue to bless yourself and say may i be free from corona virus may my family be free from corona virus may oh everyone my neighbors my friends my enemies those who are not acquainted with me may all beings be free from corona virus may corona virus disappear from the world may those who are infected by this dangerous virus may they recover soon may all beings be well and happy and first you wish good happiness to you continue to do few minutes continue to do can continue to do until you feel you continue to do may i be free from corona virus may corona virus not hurt me may i be free from corona virus may i be well and happy may i be well and happy until you feel that few minutes couple of minutes five minutes when you feel based on that mind you spread towards your family towards your wife husband or children parents and equally look at them in happy mood wish them all good luck don't think of a wife who is angry with you you don't want to wish that never do that don't think of the husband who is angry with you never think of that you think that your wife is helping your husband is helping because to develop for me these noble qualities i remember not very far from my varanasi long time ago maybe with few hundreds of years ago there was a beggar coming and some people simply want to avoid but one man he said my friend is a good friend is coming they ask him is your friend no i don't know him but he is in need he is coming to ask him something he is giving me the opportunity to practice the generosity oh god please come he gives so the same day when somebody is yelling at you shouting at you don't shout back yell yell don't yell back give a minute don't be rushed to re answer back when you rush it is going to be brutal when you take a couple of minutes or seconds then it it will produce good answer especially when somebody shouting at you you never answer back right away give it a few seconds because within that few seconds it will produce a generate a good answer then the answer will be good you are not the loser the person who insulted you will be the loser this is the noble teaching this is the dhamma we call one man he was standing in the street asking some food for whatever reason he didn't get anything in the middle of the day bright sun he walks into the forest back here he sees a, a huge mango tree and he lay down on the mango tree and gives a nice shade and the mango tree is now waving the branches now the breeze in here and then all of a sudden a tree dropped a nice ripe mango he is full of sweet now he has said what he had to say dharmo vanan 
the dharma not in the city but in the forest i came this nice tree gave me said protected me from the bright heat and it gave me nice breeze and it gave me food nice mango space respect dharma vanantra gatha dharma is in the forest so what we have to learn is dharma is of these noble qualities these are noble qualities and why are you trying to develop these noble qualities take three minutes a day and try to apply the technique that buddha has said a meditation a loving kindness but we pass it but right now you can do loving kindness and this is the important and you can pervade send off these good thoughts that will travel all the world there's no border the thoughts are very powerful it travels borderless timeless unlimited speed the cry of the cow will disappear the love of the mothers and fathers will get spread that will generate a good atmosphere a plague will disappear typhoon this tsunami will disappear and that begins not from outside but within myself within the family there are lot to talk about buddha's life we are not very far away from kusinara from varanasi <coughs> Seven six hours, but I tried. And two thousand four hundred sixty four years in three four days time with the past away. An old monks, venerable Ann, and surrounded by the old monks, venerable Ann immediately turned other side when Buddha was in the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana. Back and forth. Then he entered to Parinirvana. When he entered to the fourth jhana, when the Balananda told when the Balananda said, "Oh, but the past," and and he said, "No, no, but the din passed away." He entered to the fourth jhana. Then immediately after passing away, but the Immediately after passing away of the Buddha, Sahamba Devas were present. Sahamba the Brahma, he was the first to utter this: "Sabbeva Nikhi Pisanti, Bhuta Loki Samusya, Yatha Ete Zo Satta." लोके अपटी पुगल तथा गतो बलपतु संबुद्धो परिनिबुद्धो ओल लिविंग बीइंग्स इन द वर्ल्ड टाइम इवन द मोस्ट परफेक्ट फुली इन द आईटी एंड इनकंपरेबल बुद्ध Past. This reminds me about a couple of weeks ago. But seventy-two trucks in one on one line, America carrying the corpses of dead bodies or dead bodies of victims of coronavirus. One by one pass. Nobody knows how many dead bodies in one big truck. A long, heavy truck, seventy-two 
wrapped up in white one by one one son who knew that his father is in one of them so he came to the front side of the truck and one by one but he didn't know he couldn't locate in which truck his father's dead body is there but each truck that is passing him daddy 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 and painful tone every truck passes some they don't even were in caskets some even without a proper dress shirt just thrown into the cremation burn unexpected these things come all of a sudden within a short period of time thousands hundreds of thousands were taken by this brutal virus there's no age limit it was not reserved for one ethnic community no color complexion was taken in because it is white black yellow green dark oh a big victims of that from east to north west north to south and still processing we don't know whether there is next time i am going to be the victim we do not want to live on that but it just to be aware that boy who stayed until the last truck the tears cry went back to the tent floor could bear he took a very foolish decision he said daddy jumped from the tenth floor to the death this is the situation this is what is happening today we should know we should not rush us we must know we should not be compelled by the dirty motives ugly motives foolish motives people sometimes when they feel they this thing that taking every of his one's life is the solution but is aggravating never think of that kind of foolish things to do be aware when you have heard that the death is there around the corner you be good enjoy your life eat nicely share our time don't eat alone don't dress alone i my brother held us to the die i had to go for a funeral when i was there after funeral my sister in law invited me i feel very sad and vulnerable and they you open so me the i think at least nearly 100 of search see what i can i told him you see you are also part responsible he had so me but he took only one shirt with him but it would have been good if he distributed these things among others before his death but what is to so think of these things so i am very thankful that i got this opportunity to talk to you from the deer park very important place of the buddhist life the place of origin of the sangha dhamma for noble truth it fall path and having that said you should not forget the greatest sangha community and also the bikkhuni community a bikkhuni community 
is a neglected community of the Buddhist world. We should revive this. We must work hard to give them the real opportunity to spread the Dhamma. They have been heroes at the time of the Buddha. They are equally capable of spreading the Dhamma of the Buddha, conducting meditation and preaching the Buddha's Dhamma. And in Malaysia, we do need to revive it. Bodhidharma Society of Kapon has started reviving this Bhikkhuni order. And they are inviting those who like to get ordained. They will all provide facilities. And for the first time, the Malaysian can be proud. The first magazine, a voice of Buddhist nun, to support this, the effort is just out for free distribution. Those who like to have a copy, please go to the Bodhidharma Center in Kapon and get your free copy. At the same time, I dearly thank Buddhist Chair Fellowship at Damansara for giving this opportunity to me to address, to talk to people who are housebound, homebound, under movement control. You're good, be happy, enjoy, don't think of, oh, death is coming. No, it is just be aware. Talk, death is another side of the coin. Life comes with the death. Youth age is there with the old age. Happiness is there with the suffering. And just be aware how these things work. And Buddhist Gem Fellowship is doing a superb work to help the Buddhist community. And today we listen to Dhamma, and also you got certain guides. I hope you will apply this, whatever I said, to a day to day life and be a better Buddhist, better and better. I know all of you. Those who are listening, they are very faithful, they are knowledge, Dhamma is great, they have a desire to practice, they are generous practicing people. May your own world path be full of joy and happiness, may no harm come to you. May the blessings of the Buddha Dhamma Sangha be upon you, the old divine forces be with you. May your day-to-day -day life be full of joy and happiness. May your family life be good, happy, joyful. Finally, may all this merit be helpful for you to have a short sum. I bless you. May you be all well and happy. Bhavatu sabba mangalan rakhantu sabba devata sabba buddhanu bhavena sada sote bhavantu te Bhavatu sabba mangalan rakhantu sabba devata sabba dhammanu bhavena sada sote bhavantu te Bhavatu sabba mangalan rakhantu sabba devata sabba sanghanu bhavena sada sothi bhavantu te. Bhante, thank you very much for your Dharma sharing. Hello. Bhante, uh, before we con continue the questions, can Hello. you please, yes, yes. Uh, your video is hang, your video hang, maybe you can uh, switch on and off oh. the uh, end point. Ah. Are, 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 are. Okay, uh, Bhante, there's a question yeah. from a uh, uh, listener. Just now yeah. we had 83 viewers during your talk. Uh -huh. 83 persons listening in. And there's a question asking, yeah. uh, after the first rains retreat, the Buddha yeah. sent out 60, araha, 60 uh, monks, yeah. Yeah. each in going in one direction on their own. So yes. 
the question is why this practice was not continued after that after that the monks go out together in groups oh well, well, it is not that they are not practicing it is practicing today how many monks foreign monks are present in malaysia every country today buddhism is found in almost in all countries from north pole to south and in all countries you find uh, buddhism in different forms where in the old traditions whether it's vajrayana hinayana or mahayana they have their own temple centers and uh, so uh, like to send if i want to send the 60 monks i won't be able to because i don't have 60 monks but even in uh, less in numbers they have been practicing they have been sending the monks are in fact taking this message of course and uh, even the nuns they have started but unfortunately we don't have enough nuns so the we cannot say that the, the it is not practiced it is practiced all over the world and especially in buddhist country whether it's thailand or burma or sri lanka or other buddhist countries they have taken uh, steps to send monks the, there are many foreign temples in other america or in europe in other many different countries even in israel even in the middle east also now uh, even in kuwait they are operating temples inside apartments for the availability yes uh, thank you bante uh, yeah we can see a lot of uh, foreign missionaries uh, going around and uh, traveling the world teaching the dhamma yes bante there's another question on yeah. the slaughter houses yes yeah animals are still being sold in supermarkets yeah so when we buy from the supermarkets slaughter houses still have to do their job they still slaughter so is that the same as slaughtering the animals ourselves <laughs> Yes, yes, as you said. But the question is this: there is no direct partition. When you go to a, a restaurant and you order hot dog, hot dog is a part of the meat from animals, but you, you are not taking part. It is there whether you buy it or not. But if when you go to the slaughterhouse and select, okay, I want this, and it's different, you directly take part in. But if all world, if we get together and decide, okay, let us avoid eating meat. that is a collective decision you take part in that collective decision that is good but it will not happen it is something that even before previous buddhist time we were pre buddha period they have been always like this so i don't think there will be a global or blanket uh, ban in the slaughtery it will not happen it has to be always by individual practice Yeah 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 ah uh, thank you bante yeah 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 yeah, yeah. bante this uh, yeah. during your talk you stressed a lot on practicing the dhamma in daily life and you gave a lot of examples yeah. and we show very practical examples very simple day to day examples yeah. now bante yes yeah. yeah. how do you should the practice of meditation be incorporated in daily lives the uh, practice now you see that for example we talk about you have to sit and cross legs it is not necessary always when you come across in the street and if somebody is really you know, looking at you frowning now here you don't frown back but you see that you are aware that is frowning but you simply ignore it ignore it in the sense but you don't get uh, uh, motivated by that uh, wild uh, attitude but you tolerate them and there it is a practice you don't react you observe and you behave yourself that is dhamma Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you, Bante. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So yes. that is how we practice uh, even mindfulness in daily life. Yes. Bante. Yes. Uh, yes. Before we end, maybe you can uh, do some sharing of merits. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then yeah. we will pass it to pass on to our president, Dr. Sri Dr. Victor Wee, to share some basically announcements. Ah. Okay. And, uh, okay. Yeah. Before that, uh, next Sunday on the tenth of May, you are having yeah. a talk by Dr. Pang Cheng Ka. Uh -huh. It will be online at Facebook Live at ten a ten o'clock to everybody uh -huh. who's listening in. Ten a.m. Uh -huh. uh, Dr. Pang Cheng Ka topic on kindfulness and stress reduction. Oh, Dr. Oh, Pang oh, is a psychiatrist from the Sunway Hospital and oh, I think it's a very relevant topic by a very medical professional. Ah, I think lots I, of people are facing lots of stress today. Yes, yes, it is. It is. Yes. That's good. That's good. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Now, <laughs> yeah. now, friends, it is good that you have concentrated on the Dhamma and thereby you have developed a positive thought. They are very powerful thoughts. In fact, the positive thought we call wholesome and they are very powerful and it is sharing. That means we share those positive thoughts, powerful thoughts with our departed relatives. If they are in a position to share this marriage, may they share this made and may they emerge happy, joyful wherever they are. With those kind and compassionate thoughts, let us transfer the marriage to our departed ones. Let us do it together. Idam me nyati nang bhotu sukheta untu nyateyo Idam me nyati nang bhotu sukheta untu nyateyo Idam me nyati nang bhotu at the same time, may the devas share this marriage. May the devas protect us from harm and trouble. May they shed light on our day-to-day -day life to be happy and safe. With those thoughts, let us share the marriage with devas. Let us do it together. Ittavata chame hi sambhatam punya sampadam sabbe deva anumodantu sabbe sampatte siddhiya Ittavata chame hi sambhatam punya sampadam sabbe deva anumodantu Dantu Sabha Sampati Siddhya Ittavata Acha Ammehi Sambhatam Punya Sampadam Sabbe Deva Anumodantu Sabha Sampati Siddhya by all the merits that we have to today, may these merits be helpful for us to have a peaceful, joyful life in the long journey of samsara. Finally, may all these merits be helpful for us to attain the supreme bliss of emancipation, nirvana. Say please three times, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Bhante. Okay. We like you. now to uh, for for your information. Uh, this is the first time Bhante is going online using Zoom, and uh, yeah. I think it's a wonderful practice. Now that Bhante can share Dharma throughout the world, even with the lockdown. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So let us now invite our president, Dr. Sri Dr. Victor Wee, to ah, share yeah. the VESA programs and what's in store at, from BGF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Dr. Sri? Um, thank you very much, uh, Bobby. Uh, and uh, Bhante Sivali, thank you so much thank for your you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, because Bhante has uh, actually uh, given the speech from uh, the Deer Spark 
at uh, uh, you know uh, Saranath, um, yes. uh, which is uh, in Vanarasi, and uh, this yes. is where, as Bhante mentioned, that yes. the Buddha, after his enlightenment, walked all the way to Vanarasi to preach to the five monks. Yes. And after that, after preaching the first Dhamma Chakra Pavatana Sutta, Gondanya attained, uh, became a Sotapanna. Yes. And uh, also, this was a place where Yasa and his 54 friends were, became monks yes. at the first Sangha. Yes. And his parents yes. were the first um, uh, Upasakas. And yes. uh, Bhante mentioned about you know how uh, Nandia built the first shrine for the Buddha for yes. the first of yes. the seasons. And after that, the 60 Arahants were sent in different directions to preach the Dhamma. Bhante yes. also yes. mentioned how um, the, the sun might shine very brightly during the day and the moon by night, but the Dhamma uh, yes. shines day and night in all directions. Eh? And uh, yes. Dhamma is actually for us to practice, not something for us just to place in the bookshelf to show the yes. what wonderful collection of Tripitaka we have. Yes. And, uh, we should also practice metta in our lives, starting yes. first in ourselves and reading Dhamma onward, uh, the metta outwards, so that this can actually help in the transformation of the world. So very inspiring speech and very appropriate because uh, just a few in a few days' time, we will be yeah. uh, celebrating Wesa and Bante is actually yeah. speaking from, from Sarana itself. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so this is an opportunity, Bante, that we have uh, a chance to hear the Dhamma talk all the way from India. Uh, yes. India yes. So it, this is really wonderful. So uh, yes. you know, uh, because of the lockdown, um, yes. BGF will be going online to celebrate our Wesa Eve uh, that fall yes. of May. Uh, we have a program starting from. 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. Yes. And on Wesak Day itself, on the 7th of May, this will be yeah. between 9 to 11 a.m. We will have yeah. food yeah. for Wesak, talks, and including short movies about the um, uh, stories uh, that the children learn. This is a movie yeah. made by children. One is about yeah. Angul Mala, another one is another uh, Buddhist story. And uh, we will also have musical performances by Wayfarers, iGems, and other musical yeah. groups. So please um, log in into the PGF uh, YouTube um, uh, Facebook Live so that you might be able to participate in this uh, WhatsApp WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp Day is also a time when we should uh, follow the Buddha's advice of giving religious uh, donation. In the Kala Dhana Sutta, the Buddha did mention about how uh, we should support really good religious causes. And um, so we have providing this occasion for devotees to light a candle at the PGF Center. And if you like, you make some donations, uh, you know, in order to support uh, for a religious cause. Uh, and any amount is welcome. Um, in the transmission that we will be doing on Wesak Day and Wesak Eve, we were also going to display the name of donors, uh, you know, so that people who have made donations and actual candles will actually be lit at the picture center. We have make arrangements for that. So we hope that um, we will continue to get your support. Uh, now with the lockdown, uh, we have been going through lockdown for, for a few months and then we, uh, it, we will also have to need social distancing as we move along. Yeah? So, yes, uh, so we thank you. Uh, we have already we have uh, some devotees who have supported uh, by lighting candles, uh, but um, this is uh, our, the occasion when we should actually support good Buddhist causes. Huh? So um, uh, we'd like to thank you all and uh, hope that you can join us in our program and also giving thanks to uh, Bhante Sibali for giving us a wonderful talk this morning. Uh, thank you, Dato Sri. And uh, before we end, just a reminder, Visa Eve is on Wednesday night and on Thursday morning, Visa Day on the 7th, we are having our Visa online programs at VGF. And also on the 10th of May, this coming Sunday, 10 o'clock to 11.30, a talk by Dr. Tang Chenka on kindfulness with stress reduction. So thank you everyone. Uh, looking forward to see you very soon. Thank you very much. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.